Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today I'm gonna to show you some tips and tricks on Keurig coffee makers. So if you're new to Keurig coffee makers, or if you've had a Keurig for a long time, hopefully I can show you a few tricks that I have learned because I've got a lot of coffee makers. I do see a lot of comments on my YouTube videos. So here are some tips and tricks. So the first one is going to be remove the K-cup. This can be hard to do. I know Keurigs are meant for you're on the go. After you're done brewing your cup of coffee, if you could take your cake up out, this is going to lead to clogged needles. One of the number one comments I see are my needles are like, I put a cake up in, I press the brew button, nothing happens. And it ends up being a clogged needle. It's a simple fix, but you may not be thinking of it right away. It may take you a while to fix it. But taking the cake up out after you're done brewing, they, they can be a little hot when they're done. You can wait a little bit, but take it out, close the lid, you're ready to go. Now, with that, once a week, do a fresh water rinse. This is when you, don't, there's no cake, don't put a cake up in here, lift the lid, close it, do a six or an eight ounce, whatever your lowest setting is, get you an old cup, brew the water into an old cup, you're gonna be amazed how dirty that is. It, it cleans these top needles, it cleans the lower needle basket, gets this all nice and fresh, and it really helps prevent that clogged needle. So remove the cake up and do some fresh water rinses. The next one is you maybe when you first get a Keurig or if a Keurig has been sitting for a while, I love to prime the pump. Keurigs, especially these newer ones with these really fast heating elements, they really have to have that water inside the machine when it starts brewing because they've got a heating element and if the heating element heats up without any water in it, you're gonna get a trip thermostat. So what I like to do is fill your water tank up with water and then raise it up and down off of the coffee maker. It can be a little tricky. Any, and I would do that for all of these coffee makers. This is, I'm just using the K-Express Essentials. Lift it up and down, full of water, lifting it up and down. I'll do this 20 times. Sometimes I'll do it so much, water will start to drip out here. That means I've, I've pushed water all the way through the machine. It's full of water, I'm ready to go. Especially if you get a brand new coffee maker. I see a lot of comments where, oh, I got it out of the box, filled the water reservoir up, and I brewed a cup of coffee and it went dead. So that could be one of the reasons, or if it has sat for a while, water will evaporate out of these. So make sure you lift it up and down just a whole bunch of times, prime the pump. That's what I really like to do. Another one, you may not know this, but you can use your own ground coffee and a reusable K-cup. They come in the single needle. Some of these machines are single needles. Some of them are multi-brew, five needles. When you want to do the five needles, I recommend the My K-Cup from Keurig. They sell other ones. These are work the best with the five needles. Now, if you're going to use this, there is a red plug in there. I have found that if I remove the red plug, that does seem to do the best job for the five needles. You can also use these on single needles. That's when you're going to put the red plug in. Make sure it's in, you put your ground coffee in here. Again, you can use your own coffee grounds. This is really cool. So you may or may not have known that. Okay, so the next thing is a water filter. So these coffee makers do not need to have a water filter in the water reservoir. You may or may not have gotten this water filter, this carbon water filter with your Keurig. You can use them just fine without it. All the carbon water filter does is help with taste. If your water has a really bad chlorine smell or taste to it, the carbon water filter will help take out that taste. Change it out every two months. And that's a very nice way to help make your coffee taste better. Also, if you live at a high elevation, a lot of these coffee makers, you have to put it in a high elevation. So if you live in like Denver, water is going to boil at a lower temperature. So if you put your cake up in and press the brew button and you get a bunch of steam, that probably means you're at a high elevation and you need to put it in high altitude mode. Now you may get that bunch of steam after the first brew, but if you've been using this for five or six brews and you're getting a bunch of steam and not much coffee coming out, that probably means you need to put it in high altitude mode. And I have videos on how to put each one of these in high altitude mode. A lot of times it's just a simple press the two buttons, a light's going to flash. Okay, I'm in high altitude mode. You can reverse it. And I even, sometimes you may be in high altitude mode that you shouldn't be in high altitude mode. So that's also, if your coffee's not as hot as it should be, make sure you're not in high altitude mode. My last tip and trick is keep up on descale. Now, I've got videos on how to descale these with vinegar. I do recommend the Keurig descaling solution. It does cost a little bit. It costs a lot more than vinegar, but I do think it rinses out better. Vinegar, I found I got to use a little bit, a few more fresh water rinses, but keeping up on the descale is really important. These newer ones, they light the light after 250 brews. 
The older ones, the light may or may not come on for you, um, but keeping up on that descale really keeps the inside of the coffee maker clean. What you're wanting to prevent, these heating elements on these newer ones are really small, and if you get calcium buildup on there, it's gonna start closing that off. Once it gets to a point where it's really built up, you're probably not going to fix it if you tried to descale it. It's probably gonna break a chunk off and clog it up and it's not gonna work anymore. So I always recommend keeping up on descale. If you have really hard water every two to three months, if your water's not as hard, so say up around your shower head, if it's not white and crusty all the time, you know, try to do it every six months to, to a year at least. Try to keep up on it at least once a year. Okay, so this was my simple video on tips and tricks. I've got another tips and tricks on descaling. Descaling these things can be very complicated. I'm gonna do tips and tricks again. I have a descale video on, on each one of these, but it has become such a valuable tool for people. I wanna do some tips and tricks on descaling. I'm also gonna, since I have so many videos on YouTube, I'm also gonna do my most common question I get. I've got about five or six questions that I see in the comments all the time. And I just wanna share with you, they may be a question you've had. I, just, I, I actually find them very interesting. So that's why I wanna share them with you. Then I'm actually gonna do a video on trying to get the best cup of coffee from a Keurig. Keurigs are very nice. They're meant for speed, which they are very fast, but sometimes the coffee may not taste as good. I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks on great tasting coffee. So. I'm also releasing my own brand of coffee. It's gonna be in the K-cup form and it's gonna be in the whole bag and the whole bean form. So check that out, Just A Dad Coffee. It's gonna be on Shopify here real soon and it's gonna be on my Facebook group page. Just A Dad Videos um, Facebook group page. That's where I do my free giveaways on my coffee makers. And if you could check that out. I also have a new podcast, Coffee With Dad. It's where I have simple, I do it in this kitchen. I invite guests over. I wanna honor different professions, teachers, coal miners, truck drivers, police officers, firemen. I wanna interview them about their story and just kind of share a cup of coffee with them. It's just a very nice podcast. We don't get too deep into anything, but there's kind of neat stories. So if you could, please hit the, the like button. That really helps out my YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button. And again, I recently just got my plaque from Just A Dead or from YouTube. For 100,000 subscribers, that's all because of you. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. That, that's a, it's a really awesome honor from YouTube and it would not be possible without you. So thank you so much. I really look forward to the future and just thanks again.